So hi everyone, thanks very much for having me um, here to speak to you today. Uh, my name is Ray McGlory and I'm a Sustainable Procurement Policy Advisor at the Scottish Government. I'm here to talk to you today about some of the latest policy developments in the sustainable procurement space and to bring you up to speed with some of the outputs from the National Climate and Procurement Forum. So as you know, in April 2019, we declared a global climate emergency. And to kick off, I've outlined some of the overall context um, and highlighted some key climate policies which drive each of the actions that we're taking. So you'll see them there on the slide in front of you just now. So in procurement, part of our job is to try and frame everything in terms of the sustainable procurement duty, which sits underneath the Procurement Reform Act. So under the duty, public bodies are required to consider how they can improve the economic, social and environmental well-being of the authority's area and act in a way to secure improvements identified. So the benefit of the sustainable procurement duty is that it places a focus on doing the right thing at the right time. So realising that while climate is routinely a consideration, it's not always a consideration and the same applies for other socio and economic considerations. So what's the ask? Most of you will probably be familiar with this. So climate change reporting duties require publicly funded bodies to outline how they will, and you'll see I've outlined three main points in the slide. So the first one being aligned spending plans and use of resources to contribute to reducing emissions and delivering on targets. So this one is really helpful because working in procurement, we're aware that often we're involved quite late on in the process. So the impact that we can have may be less. So if customers and organisations could start thinking earlier on about the climate impact of their spending, we have a better chance of having much more fruitful outcomes. So the second is publish or otherwise make available progress towards achieving its emissions reductions targets. And the third is contribute to Scotland's adaptation programme. And the most recent version of this was published in 2019. So what's our response? So in 2019, the programme for government commitments outline our commitment to leverage £13.6 billion pounds in annual public procurement spend to contribute towards the transition to a more resource efficient and lower zero carbon economy. And as a result of this commitment, we've set up the National Climate and Procurement Forum. So the forum has representation from across all of the key sectors and there's five associated work streams which sit underneath this overarching group. So this slide gives a high level summary of the main focus and outputs that each of them cover. Across each of the work streams, we've got representatives from public, private and third sectors. We also have SME representation and we have climate specialists input as appropriate. I won't go into too much detail on all of the outputs here, but I've drawn out a couple of recent deliverables, which I think you might find um, useful to be aware of. So, starting with strategy and objectives. So this group focuses on high level messaging and ensuring that the main forum maintains a line of sight to related Scottish Government policy and they also maintain links to other relevant forums. They meet about four times a year and have regular updates in between, and they've been behind various outputs. So this includes, there was a joint ministerial letter, which was issued in March 2021 to all chief officers in the public sector. Um, the letter included some leadership statements and key messages, and it was a call to action. We've also created a policy note, One Stroke 2021, and that sets out similar key messages and also breaks down what people are expected to do. So most recently, under the remit of this work stream, we've updated this existing policy note. So this new version will be published imminently and it will reflect how our understanding and work has moved on since the original was published at the start of 2021. The updated version will supersede the original and include new sections on adaptation as well as work stream outputs like the climate literacy e-learning and updated standardised statements and guidance that encourage climate considerations at the selection stage of the procurement process. So secondly, this work stream have recently developed some content for the Procurement and Commercial Improvement Programme, so PSIP. And the PSIP assessment provides a means of measuring and reporting on the procurement and commercial capability of organisations through the provision of evidence based around a series of set questions and other evaluation methods. So the group have developed a question, which I've outlined on the slide for you here, and you'll see it focuses on circular economy and climate. It hasn't been used yet because of various constraints in public sector procurement, but we think that this isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, as it's given public bodies time to build up evidence, which will allow them to sufficiently answer this question when it does come around. 
So moving on now to people and capability. So there's been a lot of activity underneath this work stream. So this includes development of the Climate Literacy eLearning, which was published in March 2021. And feedback on this product has been great. It was initially aimed at procurers, but we've seen uptake from well beyond the buying community. And this includes suppliers. So please do go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. It was very much a demand-led product and it's hosted on the Sustainable Procurement Tools platform and takes about one and a half hours to complete. Um, it's a simple introduction to climate and how it can be applied through procurement. So within the Scottish Government, we've mandated um, this e-learning for our buyers and this is something that other organisations have also done. So as I said, we encourage businesses to have a look too. We've encouraged that through the Supplier Development Programme and it's a free resource and we're really happy for anyone to access it. So please do go have a look at the tools platform if you haven't already done so. Um, another output of this work stream has been the updated tools guidance. So if you do visit the platform, you'll see that there's several guide, guidance documents which cover sustainable procurement across the piece. Um, there's four claims specific guides there. They follow the procurement journey format and outline what buyers can address and can do at each stage of the procurement process where they've identified an opportunity to address climate and their procurements. These have been updated um, to be more user friendly and now they contain banks of example contract clauses and key performance indicators. So again, anyone can have access to these. Please do go and have a look. Um, they'll give you or they should give you an idea of what buyers are considering um, throughout their procurement process. So lastly, this work stream have developed a bank of best practice case studies. There's a range of procurements covered and they aim to give um, useful information, including real life examples of how scoring has been done in some instances. So I've listed a couple of the topics that are covered in those case studies on the slide that you can see just now. So next, moving on to the operational procurement work stream. So their key output today has been development of from now to 2030 templates. So these templates look at categories and different actions organisations can take to achieve net zero by 2030. And this is because while some bodies will aim for the Scottish Government's set target of 2045, many organisations are aiming for net zero by 2030 or earlier. So this template has been created to be flexible, regardless of the differences in organisations' net zero targets. Another key output from this work stream that should be looked at alongside the from now to 2030 templates is the primary impact areas of climate change guide, so PX. And there are 11 PX areas across the sectors where climate impact is prevalent and PX guides have been developed for each of these 11 areas. And the purpose of the guides is to better inform organisations of opportunities or considerations that they may want to embed um, to meet climate emergency objectives through their procurements. So I'll move on now to supplier and market engagement work stream. I've outlined an overview of the remit of this work stream on the slide that you can see at the moment. And I think it's important to pause here um, just to note that procurement aren't delivering on Scotland's climate change commitments on our own, nor are we passing these commitments over to suppliers. Um, we both have a key role to play and consistency is key. And at the heart of everything that we've tried to do, um, we always try to ensure that the requirements are palatable for suppliers and that small indigenous suppliers in particular are on the journey to net zero with us. So the supplier and market engagement work stream is made up of representatives from across the various sectors and this includes buyers and policymakers. But crucially, suppliers and representatives in the supplier development programme also sit in this work stream. So the main and most recent output from this group is development of bolstered guidance and standardised statements associated with the environmental management question in the single procurement document. And this initiative was launched in April, so really recently. By way of some background, the single procurement document or the SPD is a standard questionnaire that potential bidders complete, which allows public bodies to identify suitably qualified and experienced bidders. And the standardised statements are there to assist buyers in setting out selection criteria and minimum standards in a consistent way. It is worth noting that these statements are not intended to be a definitive list of all of the potential selection criteria that individual buyers may require. So there's been an existing environmental management question which had no guidance associated with it and I've outlined that on the slide for you that you can see just now. So this question remains unchanged and what the work stream have done is assist buyers and suppliers in making the best use of this existing criteria. So it's associated guidance and standardised statements that the work stream have bolstered. They haven't adjusted the question itself. So in summary, the proposed initiative should aid 
public bodies in embedding scalable and consistent requirements for better climate change plans. And therefore, the guidance produced does include climate change plan templates to assist bidders. So in this slide, I've highlighted the key points around the updates that the work stream have carried out. So guidance and uniform use of the question. The guidance for buyers on how to implement the updated statement is available in the climate emergency section of the procurement journey, with accompanying guidance for suppliers on the climate emergency section of the supplier journey. And then the associated guidance for evaluating these better climate change plans is available on the sustainable procurement tools. The so second point you'll see is a phased approach. So you'll note that the guidance encourages users to take a milestone approach, and this is based on commencement date of the contract to incorporate climate and carbon management into their contracts. So the phased nature of this approach is something that we hope will give the market time to prepare. So supporting the market in our endeavour to meet climate change targets is a key priority. And as I mentioned, we've produced templates to assist bidders in responding to the requests for their climate change plans. And this includes four pre-populated example templates, which can be found on the procurement and on the supplier journeys. And lastly, you'll see here different requirements for relevant and priority contract. And I'll come to that in more detail on the next slide. So in terms of defining a relevant contract, the Sustainable Procurement Tools platform contains guidance to help buyers decide when it is relevant to include climate criteria in their procurement exercises. The Sustainability Test is a self-assessment tool designed to help buyers embed relevant and proportionate sustainability requirements consistently in the development of their contracts and their frameworks. So the result of the sustainability test will identify if the contract is relevant and if the buyer should therefore address climate considerations at this stage in their procurement. And in these instances, from 2023, bidders will be asked to provide evidence that their organisation has taken steps to build their awareness of the climate change emergency and how they can respond. So, for example, a documented climate change plan, including planned projects and actions to reduce the bidder's carbon footprint. So emissions sources and actions only. This does not need to contain calculated carbon emissions. So in terms of a priority contract, these are contracts with a total value of four million or greater um, and or those that focus on commodities identified as climate change priorities by an organisation. And by way of an example, you see in the slide that I've outlined Scottish Government's climate change plan priorities. So in these instances, bidders would be required to demonstrate knowledge of the climate emergency and the impact of their organisation, including their organisation's own scope one and two emissions. So for example, a documented climate change plan that this time includes emission sources, calculations and actions. So I've included some links which I thought might be useful and um, that I've touched on. So I'd encourage you all to go and have a look at the materials like the sustainable procurement tools um, and also the information related to the SPD updates. And as I mentioned, the SPD updates have been live now since April and we welcome and encourage all feedback from suppliers as you start to produce your climate change plan um, templates and test our guidance in action. But we're looking to continuously improve this process. Um, we've already taken on a few comments and we are really grateful to the supplier members of the Supplier and Market Engagement Workstream, the Supplier Development Programme, um, as well as the wider market for your continued engagement um, with us on this. So next I'll move on to monitoring and reporting. This is a really complex area. You'll see I've outlined some explanation of the complexity on the slide. So the public sector in Scotland buys a huge amount of goods, services and works and we buy in a variety of ways. So while spend based supply chain factors can provide an overall macro level estimate of emissions, there's a limit um, to how useful they are for supporting procurement decisions about climate change impact. So we encourage or advocate use of spend based factors, though we do know that people are using them in certain circumstances. We would just attach a red risk if people were to use them without thinking about whether youth might stop investing to save, for example. So we keep looking, but we haven't landed on a universal tool or methodology that can be used across the board. Therefore, the monitoring and reporting work stream are focused on categories. They are a really active group of members who are involved in real contracts and are looking to make real life interventions. So for example, they're focusing on areas like um, the tires contract through Scotland Excel's framework or IT cloud services with Skills Development Scotland. So we encourage use of the tools and the guidance that we have out there. And we hope that they will help buyers affect change in terms of reducing emissions and the procurement activity. And as I mentioned previously, 
this guidance on the Sustainable Procurement Tools platform. It's all publicly available. Please do have a look and familiarise yourself with the content. It should give a real sense of what buyers are thinking um, when they're coming at this stuff. So one of the outputs of the monitoring reporting work team has been assistance with alignment of reporting. So as you might know, there's been mandated public bodies climate change duties reporting in place since 2015. So what we've said is that while buyers comply with the sustainable procurement duty, the organisation should also be gathering evidence that is required for completing the procurement element of the annual public bodies climate change report. So our climate change policy colleagues produced guidance towards the end of the year, which spoke to aligning reporting requirements and indicated that one piece of information can be used for both. So for example, in the 2021 annual procurement report, we cross reference the procurement section of the climate change report. Moving forward, we understand monitoring and reporting remains an extremely complex area. So we're willing to accept um, a mixture of data and narrative reporting from organisations. And that would be with an increase on data over time as we get better to grips with the monitoring and reporting space. And this message will be reiterated in the updated policy note, which I spoke about at the start of the presentation. So I'd like to finish up by highlighting some sources of support which are out there. Um, so I'd direct your attention to some resources to help businesses reduce their carbon footprint and compete for public sector contracts that require climate change or low carbon benefits to be included as part of that contract. These are all signposted on the new climate help and support page on the supplier journey and you'll find links to each of these sources of support there. So a few of this, the resources that are signposted include so you'll be aware of this one, Supplier Development Programme. Um, they provide free tender training and support, including answering environmental questions, demonstrating approaches to contribute to net zero, specifically responding to tender policy requirements, a dedicated SDP course, which helps suppliers understand the various policy elements related to net zero targets and public sector procurement. Secondly, there's Zero with Scotland who offer free sustainability support to businesses under the themes of resource efficiency and circular economy. Then we've got um, Scottish Government and our Climate Literacy e-learning, which I talked about in this presentation. Um, it's hosted on the Scottish Government's Sustainable Procurement Tools platform. It's free of charge and as I've mentioned, suppliers, buyers, everyone can access it to stay informed. The next there is the Sustainable Scotland Network, who provide a central hub of public body net zero strategies in their net zero planning page, which suppliers may find informative. And lastly, there's findbusinesssupport.gov.scot, who provide a central hub for business support from across Scotland's public sector, and this includes net zero as a search topic. So that's me. Thanks very much for listening. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. The slides will be circulated after the session and they'll include the links to the sources of support that I've touched on. Um, I've included my email address um, on the first slide, so please do contact me if you'd like to discuss anything further. And I'll now open up to some questions, which my colleague Louise will field for you. Okay, um, hello everyone. Thanks so much for coming along to our session and for listening to Maria's presentation. Uh, my name's Louise um, and I'm a procurement policy officer in the Scottish Government uh, focusing on climate and procurement. So I'd be really happy um, to take any questions that you have. Um, I've seen that there's a couple starting to trickle in in the chat. Um, so we've got uh, the first question we've got coming through was, is there any support available to help, my, to help me understand what I have to do within my business to help in the fight against climate change? Um, that's a really good question. I think that question came in before Maria outlined those so sources of support on the slides. Um, so those are all really good places to start and the slides will be circulated afterwards. So you've um, got a link to those. Um, those are also all signposted on um, the supplier um, the supplier journey's new climate emergency tab, um, climate emergency pages. You can find these if you go to the additional um, resources tab at the top of the page and then go over to the climate emergency. These are all listed there. Um, one extra one that is brand new, so it's not actually, we didn't include it in the slides because it's just uh, been published online, is we have a new circular uh, procurement and supply um, e-learning available on the sustainable procurement tools that was um, produced by Zero Waste Scotland. And so that has um, guidance and advice for both buyers um, on including um, like 
clauses that relate to circular procurement, but also guidance for um, for suppliers on how to um, come up with circular solutions. So that could be a really good source of support um, for your business if you're interested. Um, we have another question that has come through. Is there a register for the ESG slash carbon footprint of all businesses in the UK? as it would be key to know where um, you are in order to get better. Um, I don't think there currently is. I think you're right, that would be really useful um, to know where to get better. I think at the moment where things currently stand, because there's not a requirement uh, for all businesses to publicize their carbon footprints, there isn't really a register um, to, to like rank them. Um, but I think the more, um, the more businesses start to publish uh, their carbon footprints, um, online um the more uh we'll be able to like start comparing businesses and gather this kind of data it's also really key that, key that if you are calculating your business's carbon footprint if you follow the greenhouse gas protocol because that's the scientific standard um, if we have different businesses kind of calculating it in different ways then they aren't really uh comparable um so again we have guidance on our templates where we're asking people to calculate scope one and two emissions uh that link to that greenhouse gas protocol um let's see there was another question that i saw um i don't have a net zero plan how long does it take um i think that will depend a little bit on the scope of your business um and also um on which um climate change plan you are pursuing so as maria mentioned we have two different climate change plans one for relevant procurements and one for priority procurements. Uh, the one for relevant procurements just asks organization, organizations to list their emissions sources and an action plan to reduce their emissions. So for that, there's kind of tick boxes of all the different types of emissions that there are. So things like fuels, electricity, uh, commuter emissions, things like that. And you just tick the ones that you use. And then um, after that, it asks you to um, list an action plan to reduce your emissions um, and just to note you don't have to list actions to reduce every single one of your emissions sources um, you can focus on the ones that are most relevant to your business so for example if you're you know using a lot of electricity that might be the one to, to address uh, for example but that's that's going to be very tailored to your business uh, for the priority contract for the priority um, climate change plans that might take a little bit longer to produce because we are asking businesses to calculate their scope one and scope two emissions. And um, so just because that requires a bit more um, like technical detail, that might take you a little bit longer to produce uh, those plans. Um, let's see. Um, do the considerations for procurement take into account the embodied carbon of the products used as well as the operational energy usage? Yeah, um, this that's a really good question, and that will depend um, on the um, on the ind individual procurement um, and what's outlined um, in the contract. Um, we our guidance for buyers is to include embodied carbon, so we have um, we have a guidance document called Carbon in Production that kind of outlines um, all the different ways that carbon can arise throughout the production of materials. And so we do have example uh, procurement clauses. You're welcome to take a look at those guidances as well as they are freely available on the Sustainable Procurement Tools website. And you don't actually have to log in to access those guidances. Um, and those include some example clauses. So you might see buyers using some of those clauses. It looks like I've just got um, one minute left, so I'll wrap up just now. Um, thanks so much uh, for coming along. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact Maria. Her uh, contact details were on the slides. You can contact us at scottishprocurement um, at gov.scot as well, or come along and visit our stand. Um, thanks very much for coming along today.